Hello and welcome to another Looney Tunes review video. If you are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe to follow my journey to review all 1000 Looney Tunes shorts and give this video a like as well. So this is a review for The Organ Grinder, released in 1933. It's the 53rd in the series and it's directed by Rudolf Ising. This particular restoration comes from HBO Max, though I'm not sure if it's still up there or not. Sadly, due to copyright, I can't show you the full cartoon here, but in case you haven't seen it, you've got this organ grinder, we follow a monkey, we see some, I guess, fangirls, and we see the organ grinder and the monkey play for some kids, and that's pretty much it. Hey, a dance for you. Now shake your fist again. Hey, Tony! What's the matter, you? So what you're going to see first is a re-edit of the original audio commentary I did before I had to take that down. You'll also hear some new thoughts from me, plus you'll hear from my good friend Manny Cruz, the Toony tenor, who will be going through the history of the music in this short, as he is going to cover every single early Merry Melodies that has a theme song. So grab some popcorn and some monkeys, I suppose, and enjoy. Now look at the monkey's face. I just love the monkey's expression. <laughs> really loves that banana. Kind of reminds you of uh, Who Framed Roger, Roger Rabbit, where, where, where um, you got, I think it was either Donald or Daffy trying to play the two pianos at the same time in one little bit. Despite all of that, I'm going to be an organ grinder. I definitely want the ladies here. <laughs> Just don't tell my wife, yeah? Now we're going to see um, some of the celebrity celebrity ca cameos, if you will. I wonder who these guys are. Hmm. Ah, love Laurel and Hardy. Laurel and Hardy are just some of the best comedians of all time. You know, whenever I am feeling down, put on a, you know, Laurel and Hardy short or, or movie. Gee, I wonder who's going to imitate now. Could it be Charlie Chaplin? No? <laughs> of course, it's Harpo. I'm a huge Grouch um, Marx Brothers fan, and, and this would actually be the first time that they've referenced the Marx Brothers. I mean, I've been watching all these in order, and yeah, that was the first time. And we got a cameo from from Mickey once again. He's going to pop out from the from the engine bay. I like how they completely destroy a store, causing what I'm assuming is many thousands upon thousands of dollars worth of damage. But no, the owner's pretty happy about it. Yeah, okay, whatever. So those were my original thoughts, but right away, the big difference between then and now, aside from my better speaking voice, is that we now have an actual restoration. And in this restoration, you can see the beautiful details of what I'm assuming is New York, given that there's an auger grinder and all that. And this just shows how great restorations can really be. It's um, truly, truly amazing looks very lived in. Okay, the weirdest and funniest moment of this short has to be this, where you got these women absolutely infatuated by this organ grinder, and of course she does that whole uh, little dance there. But I am a little confused, because if you look in the background, which I know is hard to do for some of you in that scene, but why is there a monkey with a suit and tie and a hat? I don't get it. And of course she um, spanks herself on the bottom. There you go. There really isn't too much more to say in this short. I've pointed out already the celebrity references of Harpo Marx and Laurel and Hardy. And again, this is a typical Merry Melodies short. So you, there's no real story. It's just an excuse to showcase music. But speaking of music, my good friend Manny Cruz, the Tuny tenor himself, will now go through the history behind the music in this short. Take it away, Manny. Hello everyone, this is Manny Cruz, the Toonie Tenor, coming at you for a little bit of uh, Manny's music time on the 1933 Mary Melody, The Organ Grinder, directed by Rudolf Eisen. So as I've stated before, I last saw this cartoon sometime in 2018 in my chronological binge of Warner Brothers cartoons. I'm currently in 1940, I've taken a long time to do this, but you know what, life is life, you know, it is what it is. And it's so nice to see this one done in high definition. As for the cartoon itself, pretty funny, you know. Again, this is a typical run-of-the-mill Merry Melody from the early 1930s, but I like the energy of the cartoon. Some of the gags are really good, especially 
with the uh, the monkey himself, and I enjoy the dialogue of the monkey with the sped up audio track. And if you want to know more about organ grinders in general, I highly recommend that you listen to the commentary that Anthony and I did for Hurdy Gurdy Hair, Robert McKimson cartoon with Bugs Bunny, because that cartoon, I go more into the history of organ grinding itself. The title of the cartoon is a bit of a misnomer. Misnomer, misnomer, I always forget which one it is, where the thing that Bugs is using in the cartoon is an organ grinder, not a hurdy-gurdy. A hurdy-gurdy is a similar musical instrument, but not quite. So anywho, the cartoon itself, I would say 6 out of 10. Good energy as we get closer to the end of the harmonizing era at Warner Brothers. It's cool to see more the, you know, the energy is increasing. The gags are getting a little bit sharper. The animation is getting a little bit more detailed. But as we all know, Harmonizing couldn't work out a deal with Leon Schlesinger. And they decided to leave Warner Brothers and head over to MGM and start that studio. All right, so let's talk about the song itself, The Organ Grinder. So it was published in 1932 with music by Sam H. Stepped and Herb Magidson. Herb Magidson actually did the lyrics for that song. So these two are well known as being natives of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And coincidentally, today I'm recording this commentary on the birthday of a Pittsburgh native, one of my professors from undergrad, Dr. Jeffrey Kunkel. So happy birthday, Dr. Kunkel. Thanks for teaching me a lot about jazz music. And these composers that I'm talking about have worked in the jazz idiom itself. So let's talk about Sam Stept himself. S-T-E-P. T. So it's like step with a T. It's a little weird to pronounce it, but I'm just going to say step. Samuel Howard Step was born September 18th, 1897 in Odessa, Ukraine. His family moved to the United States when he was three, and he grew up in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Early in his music career, he worked at a publishing company. He was a pianist on staff, and he started working in vaudeville as an accompanist. And eventually, in the early 1920s, he moved out to Cleveland, Ohio, where he led a dance band. And that's when he started collaborating with different lyricists and started to build up his resume, so to speak. He started writing hit songs and eventually he started working his way onto films as well as writing compositions for Broadway. He opened up his own music publishing business in the 40s. And then by the 50s, he started rolling back his compositional work. Sam Stepp's compositions have been performed by luminaries in music like Frank Sinatra, Billie Holiday, Glenn Miller, Fats Waller, Louis Armstrong, Sarah Vaughan, Count Basie, and Josephine Baker, plus many, 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 many others. Sam Stepp passed away on December 1st, 1964, at the age of 67 in Los Angeles, California. December 1st, that's uh, my grandmother's birthday, who was one of the reasons why I do music. So, hi, Grandma, I miss you. you that was your birthday, <laughs> the day that he passed away. But anywho, let's get back to Sam himself. So Sam has written some compositions that have been featured in Warner Brothers cartoons. Two that I could think of or I could discover were besides the organ grinder. And by the way, this is the only Warner Brothers cartoon that the song The Organ Grinder is featured in. I couldn't find it in any other shorts. Two other noteworthy songs that he composed in his career that were featured in Warner Brothers cartoons include This Is Worth Fighting For which you usually think of for scenes where a character's fighting back. Think of, well, it was used in Scrap Happy Daffy, Tortoise Wins by a Hair, I Got Plenty of Mutton, Homeless Hair, Bunker Hill Bunny, Can the Feud, The Fair-Haired Hair, say that five times fast, Forward Hair, March, and Pace It, and strangely, the last time it was used was Wild Wife, the McKimson cartoon from 1954. So that's kind of strange. The other song that I know really well of his was only used in one cartoon, Please Don't Talk About Me When You're Gone, which was sung by Michigan J. Frog in the masterpiece One Froggy Evening from 1955. Please don't talk about me when I'm gone. Oh, honey, though our friendship ceases from now on. There's actually a recording of that song done in the late 30s. I forgot the name of the singer, but I just love the rendition of the song from that singer. I'm not saying I don't like the, the guy who did Michigan J. Frog's voice, but uh, this one's pretty neat. So that was for Sam Stepped, and let's talk about another Pittsburgh native, the lyricist of the song, Herb Magidson. He was born January 7th, 1906 in Braddock, Pennsylvania, and he died January 2nd, 1986. He was the lyricist that he worked in over 23 different films and Broadway musicals, 
and he's noteworthy for winning the first ever Academy Award for Best Original Song in 1934. The film that he wrote it for, he wrote the lyrics of the song The Continental, which was used in the 1934 film The Gay Divorcee, which had Ginger Rogers and Fred Astaire in it. So Magnuson was another person who grew up in Pittsburgh. And I just want to say that a lot of the information that I've been telling you all about about these two musicians comes from the Pittsburgh Music History website. So Herb, like I said, was born in 1906. His family owned a secondhand furniture shop on Braddock Ave in Braddock, Pennsylvania. He went to school. He graduated from the University of Pittsburgh with a journalism degree. And he also wrote reviews for performances. And he wrote lyrics for vaudeville performers. He did work in New York for a bit at a publisher, but then he moved to Hollywood and he started working under Warner Brothers in 1929 to write the lyrics for various Broadway musicals. Some of the other songs he's famous for, Midnight in Paris, Music Maestro Please, I'll Buy That Dream, and he's worked with other lyricists and composers including Ali Rub Rubel, I'm probably saying that wrong, but I, you'll hear that name come up in later Warner Brothers cartoons, and Sammy Vane as well as Sam Stepp. And he died, like I said, in 1986, at the age of 79, and he was inducted into the Songwriters Hall of Fame in 1980. Now, I do want to talk briefly about some of the other musical cues in this cartoon. So besides the title track, The Organ Grinder itself, and obviously we have Get Happy, which is the first Mary Melodies theme. There are a few cues that I want to focus on. So let's start off with, well, I'll do them in order in which they appear. So first off, you have the scene where the monkey is, you know, going around trying to get money from the kids and the organ grinder is telling him, hey, do your thing. The monkey briefly breaks into a dance, the sailor's hornpipe, which is a song that has its origins coming from British and Irish traditions in the Royal Navy over in the United Kingdom. That melody is probably better known as the very beginning of the Popeye theme song. Think of any time you see a sailor in a cartoon, you know, think of Handsome Pete <laughs> in The Simpsons or think of, you know, SpongeBob SquarePants. You're going to hear the sailor's hornpipe. And then this gag really made me chuckle. The organ grinder tells the monkey, hey, sh now shake your fist, the can. Monkey, hey, shake your can. And, <laughs> and the monkey briefly starts shaking his can, but not his little metal can for a change. He shakes his, uh, let's, let's say his rump. And I thought that was a nice little pre haze code joke that um, probably made the audience crack up. What is the song that played during that scene? So... According to the cue sheet, it's called Cooch Dance, but the melody of that song has various names. Some people call it an Arabian riff, so... So it's usually associated with the Middle East, with Arabic culture, so on and so forth. It's another example of 19th century music that takes an approximation of the music of various non-Western cultures. It's usually used in film in a stereotypical sense. Think of, like I said, the Arabian rift itself when you're thinking of the Middle East or whatever. Or, for example, you have the da 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 which is usually associated with Asian cultures like from China and Japan. A lot of times, sadly, for uh, stereotypical reasons. So the Arabian Rift itself goes by different names. Some people call it the Poor Little Country Maid, the Snake Charmer Song, or the Streets of Cairo, which is the one I've heard most. That particular melody itself, let's just call it the Streets of Cairo, has been used in other Warner Brothers shorts like Porky's Poultry Plant, Alibaba Bound, Goofy Groceries, Aladdin is Lamp, and Witch is Wicks. So you have several cartoons like Alibaba Bound and Porky's Poultry Plant that has something specifically related to the Middle East, the desert, I know in Porky's Poultry Plan, Porky plays the funnel, kind of like a snake charmer to get the worms to come out of the ground for the birds to eat. You briefly hear I Like Mountain Music in the scene where the monkey starts going into hijinks. He imitates Harpo Marx, and he imitates uh, Laurel and Hardy as well. That was a really charming scene. That song is by Harry Warren. I'm going to go more into detail about I Like Mountain Music when I do the commentary for, wait for it, wait for it, I Like Mountain Music. Oh, look at that. So I'm going to save that for next time because this is already running long as it is. Now, near the end of the cartoon, the main song that it features besides the title track is 42nd Street. And I think it's extremely appropriate for this cartoon because based on the iconography and the fact you have an organ grinder and, you know, 
for better or for worse, you do have an Italian main character, which he leans on the stereotypical side. And at the end of the cartoon, you do have a Chinese stereotype. People who study the history of New York City. There was a large immigration from Italy and from China as well. It's another New York cartoon, you can think about it. Harry Warren once again wrote the music for 42nd Street. It was originally featured in the 1933 film of the same name, 42nd Street. A lot of songs in Warner Brothers cartoons come from that film. Another example I could think of is the Gold Digger song, We're in the Money. I did not know this, but the Organ Grinder, the cartoon, is the first Warner Brothers cartoon to use 42nd Street. And again, every time I hear that particular song, I think of New York City. I think of the subway. I think of the hustle and bustle especially of Manhattan, which is, you know, most people, when they think of New York City, they think of the city, you know, the World Trade Center, Central Park, the Lincoln Center, Wall Street, all these different things. You think of Manhattan and, of course, the subway. And that song is like the perfect representation of it. Other cartoons that have featured 42nd Street. So, like I said, the Organ Grand is the first, but weirdly, Bosco's Nightmare has it. The upcoming I Like Mountain music also features it. The, I know that in the very beginning of Bosco's picture show, during the opening credits, you hear 42nd Street. And then I think of other cartoons that, again, invoke a feel of the city of New York, like Hobo Bobo, Daffy Doodles, Awful Orphan, Often an Orphan, Rebel Rabbit, Hurdy Gurdy Hair, and the Honey Mousers. And weirdly enough, the Spice Water from the Seven Arts era, which is kind of strange. Yeah, I would say that's pretty much about it. I hope you all enjoyed this Manny's Music Time for the Organ Grinder. I apologize, it took a little long to come out but i'm very meticulous with my research for the most part and also i had a lot of stuff going on thank you again for listening enjoy the rest of the cartoon and i look forward to another manny's music time and i hope you have all a wonderful day and once again so long folks and thank you manny for that extra information regarding the music for this cartoon as for the score i totally agree with you six out of ten it's not bad it's not good it's ordinary but hey it's not the worst thing I've seen, of course. It's entertaining enough. But that'll do it for this one. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, take care.